Now is a favorable time, so stick around. Welcome back to Through the Lectionary. We have entered into the season of Lent, so today we will be looking at the epistle text for the first Sunday of Lent, and that is written in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 through 10. Working together with him, then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain, for he says, In a favorable time I listened to you, and in a day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We put no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God we commend ourselves in every way, by great endurance and afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love, by truthful speech and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, through honor and dishonor, through slander and praise. We are treated as impostors and yet are true as unknown and yet well-known, as dying and behold we live, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing yet possessing everything. This is the word of the Lord. So Paul is, is uh, writing to the Corinthians once again, and, uh, and, and again, this is the epistle for the first Sunday in Lent, uh, the first Sunday uh, of Lent, in Lent, right? Now, the first Sunday in Lent. Uh, and uh, the title for this Sunday is Invocabit. comes from that first line of the epistle uh, when uh, he calls, I will answer him. So, uh, you know, moving along with this theme then uh, with with the Corinthians now is a favorable time right? uh, now is the day of salvation there there's no more time to uh, put things off there there's no more time uh, to wait you know we think we have all of this time in the world to uh, to get things together and we've really spent uh, quite a bit of time in our lives um, uh, relying on self rather than relying on uh, the Lord our God. And Paul really shows the difference here uh, in the way the world will view us and in the way of reality, what, what things really are. So within the context of the timeline for the Apostle Paul, he had written 1 Corinthians in the spring of the year uh, 56 AD. And, you know, we, we learn in 1 Corinthians uh, how kind of corrupted the, the Corinthian church is, right? They have all of these uh, gifts of the Spirit, but they're not using them to build one another up. Uh, they're using them and, uh, and tearing each other down. So, uh, Paul writes that letter in the spring of 56. 2 Corinthians comes around uh, about a year, a little over a year later. So in the summer of the year uh, 57. And uh, this is also just before Paul would go to Corinth for three months. And uh, he spends the winter of the year 57 into the year 58 uh, in Corinth. Uh, so that's really uh, where we are as far as the as far as the timeline of things. And things after this will move very quickly 
for the Apostle Paul because in the fall of the year of 58 is when he would be imprisoned uh, in the city of Caesarea Maritime in the home of uh, Felix, the governor there. So uh, as Paul is writing, uh, he's also nearing uh, his own imprisonment in Caesarea where he would go on to appeal to uh, to Caesar. So that's kind of where we are. And, and we see from this text that the Corinthians ha- haven't, really, haven't really learned much from the first, from the first go around. They're still being pulled away uh, by the world, okay? And, and really a connection that we can make here with Corinth is that Corinth as a, as a city is, could be the equivalent of Babylon, okay? Where do God's people fit in in a faithless society? Uh, are, are they to be married to it and to kind of get along uh, being Christians uh, basically only only on the day that it's necessary to be Christians, that is, for worship, and then returning to all of the things of the world so that nothing bad happens to you uh, during the week? Or, you know, how how is this balance supposed to go? Is it a balance? Or are Christians called to live and act one way while the world does their own thing, yet we are still uh, in the world, right? Jesus says we are in the world and not and not of the world. So how does this how does this work? And ultimately, the Corinthians are not doing a very good job of of that. They are still very much married to the ways of the world and doing things the way uh, that the world does them. They're seeing Paul through the eyes of Corinth, rather than uh, through the eyes of Christ. And this is where things begin to look very, very backwards for them. But Paul uh, sparks within them urgency, right? There's no time to wait. No time to wait for a a kinder emperor to come along uh, than Nero, who, who might be a little uh, more lenient with Christianity. No, there's no time for that now, Paul says, is the favorable time. Now is the day of salvation. Give all of that other stuff up. Leave it alone. Get rid of it. Now is the time. So uh, Paul goes on about their own ministry in verse 3, that they put no obstacle in anyone's, in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with their ministry. I mean, imagine imagine if if all of us pastors could say that I mean I it would be it would be a wonderful thing you know we we hope and pray that we never put obstacles in in anyone's way but unfortunately uh, that that happens uh, sometimes and we uh, we uh, repent of 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 those things if we ever do get in the way uh, whether whether we know or uh, unfortunately most of the time you know we we have uh, no idea that that any of this is happening, but this is our goal. Our goal is, is very simply and basically to proclaim the word of God, and, and and letting that stand. Right? If the word of God is the thing that gets in the way, well, that's what the, that's what the word of God uh, does. You know, to to people. Uh, Jesus says this. The apostle Paul himself says this. But it's not for us to get in the way, right? All we are called to do is to put the Word of God out there. This is what the Word of God says. This is where we stand. And, you know, if that becomes the stumbling block, uh, you, you know, unfortunately, uh, that's the case. And we pray that uh, that one day uh, the people who have stumbled uh, and fallen would, would be lifted up again by that very same, by that very same Word. But Paul, it is not for him to get in the way, and he has not gotten in the way. No fault may be found with their ministry, but as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way. Okay, now this is the difference. Okay, because when the world looks at uh, uh, success and things like this, you know, and and we kind of look at things this way too. We are we are working hard today so that we can have it easier tomorrow. All right, you 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 work and work and work and work to, uh, today so that. You know, one day in retirement, 
uh, we can just kind of sit back and coast. And and uh, there's, you know, nothing inherently, I guess, wrong with, uh, you know, wanting to relax and, and these kinds of things, right? Nothing, nothing wrong with that. But Paul shows the difference in the ministry. And he shows the difference in the church, right? The world seeks after one thing while uh, the word and, uh, and, and the things of God are completely different. There is no time to relax. There is no time for apathy. There is no time to let the guard down, uh, so to speak. You know, you don't uh, serve in the church for so long and then say, well, it's... Uh, uh, you know, I served in the church for uh, all this time. Now it's now it's time just to sit back and not do anything, right? There's always something to do. And Paul, you know, also expressed this in, in 1 Corinthians, that it's the church worked as a body. Uh, that doesn't mean that one day the right arm doesn't become, you know, uh, a, a different part, so to speak, uh, with, with uh, what the world would see as a lesser role, but for the church is, is just as important. So, we commend ourselves in every way. Great endurance is first, right? You, you, you've got to have endurance. This is a, a race. In afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love by truthful speech and the power of God. Okay? So none of none of these things at least at first sound sound very pleasant at all and you can see why the world would would think that they're imposters uh, because if they were true, right? None of these bad things would be happening to them but they are. So Paul is encouraging them to to set their eyes uh, to set their eyes right the Holy Spirit genuine love uh, truthful speech of the power of God with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left. Now that's an interesting image too. These uh, these weapons that you know we would use in order to fight back. Uh, well, what are those weapons? Well, Paul says in in Ephesians chapter six, the sword of the spirit is the very word of God. All right. So getting back to not inserting ourselves, not putting ourselves in the way, but putting the Word of God out there, right? That's the thing that, uh, that, uh, that, that we are to, to use, okay? The weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, through honor and dishonor, through slander and praise. We are treated as imposters and yet are true. And you can, again, see how, how this would be the case. You know, if somebody's coming through proclaiming the word of God proclaiming the resurrection of the dead and winds up getting dragged out of town and stoned, uh, he, he doesn't look like he's proclaiming the truth very much to, to society. Like Paul. I mean, if, if you're writing to the Corinthians again and you're going to visit them and only a few months after you visit them, you're going to wind up in prison, uh, does that look very much like you've proclaimed the truth and, and done the right things? So the world is looking through one set of eyes while the church looks through uh, another set of eyes. They are treated as unknown, yet well, yet they are well known. We hear from the book of Acts. They are extremely well known. Right? These are the men who have turned the world upside down, and now they're here among us. It's not as easy to be so well known back in those days. You don't have the TikToks and the Instagrams. You, you've got to, you've got to put boots to the ground, and that's exactly what they did. Very well known as dying, and yet behold, we live. And uh, what, what a proclamation of, uh, of ultimately the resurrection from the dead, as they had been doing uh, the whole, the whole time, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. I remember Paul. And, uh, and Silas in prison in, in Philippi, uh, in, the, in the inner depths of the prison. And what were they doing? They were praying and they were singing him, so much so that the prisoners weren't telling them to be quiet. They were, they were listening attentively uh, to them as poor, yet making many rich. Right? They have nothing. 
they're completely dependent upon upon the people to care for them throughout their ministry. But they say, uh, yet poor, not rich ourselves, but making many rich. Why? Because they're proclaiming the word. They're proclaiming the resurrection from the dead. Then, as having nothing, yet possessing everything. Right? Why? Well, your kingdom, O oh God, is a glorious treasure. Uh, and, and the text, the text will will end there. And and it's a fitting text as we enter into this season of Lent, because the world will, you know, look upon and and has looked upon Christianity as as exactly the way the Corinthians look at Christianity. And and perhaps that's why. Uh, so many American Christian churches have kind of changed their game plan and uh, and attempted to blend together with the world. Well, Paul is speaking very much against that right here. We're not to become one with the world. We are to live in the world, to proclaim the word to the world, but we're not to blend with it. Uh, no time to waste. Now is a favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We are not to get in the way but to proclaim the word uh, and, and let that be uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the driving factor for the way the world reacts, whether, whether favorably and, and repents or, or stumbling over that word. And, and you know, that may not be the best for us, but we will have ultimately, uh, ultimately done our duty uh, once again. Have a blessed season uh, in Lent, and we will uh, see you again next week with the second Sunday in Lent and on down the line. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Thank you for tuning in this week for Through the Lectionary. Like, comment, subscribe. See you soon.